Bill, we are so excited to have our, uh, our first ever Russian team uh, at the Great Moon Buggy Race this year. And obviously, this team has a, a very close relationship with our, uh, our Team Germany, as we call them, the International Space Education Institute in Leipzig, Germany. But uh, this is uh, uh, the first year ever for uh, the Moscow Aviation University, obviously in Moscow, Russia. We had a great time yesterday talking with uh, team captain and female driver Marina Tereshkova. And we're really looking forward to seeing uh, how she and her teammates do today. This was a team that actually uh, the Russian team, Bill, lost a couple of their um, uh, teammates during the flight over. Apparently they had some visa problems uh, getting from one uh. country to another and uh, ended up not making the final hop across the pond. And uh, which, you know, the team was prepared. They all have backups, you know. Obviously mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marina was able to take over as driver. But uh, one thing they didn't count on is the fact that to get here, uh, without shipping a buggy, they broke it down and put it in all their suitcases. So here's a team that showed up with uh, key elements of their moon buggy uh, in luggage that was still back home in, in Mother Russia. <laughs> but again, uh, you know, the teams rally. Uh, I know that uh, obviously our, our uh, German team uh, came to their aid and, and found them what they need, and uh, hopefully some other teams got involved as well. But uh, they were out practicing this morning, and uh, their buggy is uh, ready, raring to go. We hope they are too. Again, this is probably a beautiful spring day for them. It was below five below zero <laughs> when they left Moscow. So, uh, so here in Huntsville, this is gorgeous weather. You see that gentleman there on the left with his still camera in his hand moving now across to the front. That's Ralph Heckel. He is with the uh, international team uh, based out of Germany, who is a huge advocate for this race. And I would say, if you, if you don't know Ralph, if you haven't seen Ralph in action, you haven't seen Shakespeare the way it was meant to be seen. Ralph is a force <laughs> of nature. Ralph is uh, 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 one of the educators and, and the uh, moon buggy advisor for the International Space Education Institute, and he has uh, uh, just been an absolute advocate uh, 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 very early from the, the time they got involved, uh, a crusader for this, uh, for this event and for all that it means to students studying engineering around the world. Um, he was uh, critical in, in uh, bringing our Russian teams here today, and of course his uh, uh, college division team, brand new team there, is uh, uh, partially made up of Russian students who are uh, colleagues of uh, our team here from the Moscow Aviation University. But uh, we got to hand it to Ralph, I tell you, he is, uh, he is an amazing guy and, and uh, certainly one of the advisors out here that uh, is making a real impact in the lives of these young uh, future engineers. Most definitely. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got another minute uh, until that uh, team from Moscow steps up to the start line. So I'll tell you, we'll just take a minute to break away, and we'll be right back with more coverage from the 2011 NASA Great Moon Buggy Race. All right, Bill, you see Moscow Aviation University, their first time here at the race, and they're off.
you can see, Bill, they're having some trouble. That first obstacle is always a killer. And it looks like uh, Moscow Aviation speed, University is underway. Moscow Aviation University on the track. First ever appearance from a Russian team. First ever appearance by this team from Moscow. We're very glad to have them here with us today. Pushing up the first hill. Looks like they're having some power problems right out of the gate. Obviously, uh, as we no uh, noted a moment ago, uh, working with some replacement parts here they didn't expect to uh, have to be dealing with. Uh, a couple of their team members uh, uh, had some some uh, uh, problems making the uh, hop across the pond, and uh, unfortunately, parts of the buggy were in the suitcases of those teammates. And our folks rally here at the Great Moon Buggy Race. We uh, we all work together. Everybody pulls together. The teams help each other out. But it looks like they, uh, in their first outing, they may still be uh, facing some challenges. Team drivers Yuri Minin and Marina Tereshkova talking to one another, working, uh, working out the issue as they uh, progress up the hill. And they are at a standstill, uh, figuring out the uh, the issue. I don't know if they've uh, got a chain there. Wait, wait, not sure what that problem would be. It's got to be very frustrating for those two young people right now. But they are assessing. Rolling back a bit, see if they can figure out the uh, the problem that they're uh, that they're having with their power. <laughs> and they are off and rolling once more. Struggling with that obstacle. Driver Yuri Minin. Fellow driver Marina Tereshkova it's hot. trying to forcefully haul that buggy over that obstacle. Obviously a lot of pride here from our Russian team. Uh, they, they're celebrating an anniversary of their own, 50 years of uh, Russian space flight, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. <coughs> 50 years ago, became the first human to orbit the Earth. Followed very closely by, uh, by Americans launching our own space program. But uh, it's, a, it's a great, great season for, uh, for space history. First flight of Yuri Gagarin. First uh, lunar rover rolling on the moon during Apollo 15. And of course, we are coming up on 30 years of the space shuttle. Rick, you know, also the uh, they put a lunar rover on the moon six months before we did, but it was unmanned. That's right, the uh, the the uncrewed uh, Lukonod one rover, and uh, so that was uh, the, their first venture into uh, uh, robotic space exploration. Very successful program. They put a second one up uh, a few months later, and uh, and I understand this Russian vehicle, this moon buggy. They call Lunacod 3. Lunacod 3, outstanding. <laughs> Paying homage to the uh, legacy of their, uh, their early cosmonauts in the Russian space program. Former competitors in the Cold War era, now obviously our partners on the International Space Station and all across the spectrum of work in space.
This technique they're using uh, does not cost them any penalties. <laughs> but as soon as they put a foot out on the, gr on the ground, uh, they d incur a penalty added to the time on the course. We've seen a lot of challenges uh, this year, Frank, with the depth of some of the, uh, the, the grooves and ruts in the various obstacles. Seen a lot of teams struggle with those this year. You know, the, uh, the reason we have obstacle judges is not just to make sure that they cross it in the proper fashion, but they also redress those obstacles each time they go over them. Right. Basically so bring it back to, uh, to, to the right. original form. We arm each of those obstacle <laughs> judges with a rake <laughs> right. and a, a walkie-talkie. Right. You can see female driver uh, Marina uh, Tereshkova there uh, throw her head back and chuckle. Frustrated, but uh, refusing to give up. The resilient spirit of these young people is amazing. Again, it's the Moscow Aviation University, their first appearance in the race, our first Russian team. We're so proud to have them with us today. Rookies usually have a, a trouble on this course. Absolutely. Uh, it's, a, it's a grueling, demanding course. But every now and then they surprise us. We've seen a few surprises from rookies today. And of course, uh, you know, we still uh, go back to last year when the Rhode Island School of Design came out of nowhere. I uh, did have an engineer on the team. Uh, uh, industrial design majors right. came in third place last year, Frank. Right. So we amazing. Have, uh, amazing. Our rookies, uh, many of them are, are paying attention to what's come before. The students all talk, and, and a few of them are pulling out some big surprises. Here goes Moscow uh, clearing the obstacle by hand. Hopping back on board, see if they can continue their run. Hear a lot of gear issues as they're going past our station here. You know, uh, if you watch the faces of the drivers, you see a lot of uh, agony, uh, a lot of stress, and when they finally cross the finish line, it uh, it looks like they've uh, they've just been released. That's right. <laughs> what Bill Bill and I were noting earlier, uh, Frank, is that uh, there is also so much laughter and so many smiles on the course. I mean, so many of them are just so jazzed to be here. Sure. That uh, even when it's frustrating, even when things don't go quite right, you can tell they're still having the time of their lives. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, we just see, uh, Rick, the tip of the iceberg here because they've been working on these contraptions on their moon machines for something like six months at least. And so we just get to see the end product of that, the real.